Hello friends. In this video, I will discuss a problem that will illustrate how you can calculate the compressive strength of a compound column. So this problem says, calculate the compressive strength of a compound column consisting of ISHB 250 at the rate of 54.7 kg per meter with one cover plate of 16 mm on each flange as shown in the figure and having length of 4 meter. So length of the column is given that is 4 meter. Assume that the bottom of the column is fixed and top is hinged. And what other things are given? Fy is given, Fu is given and modulus of elasticity E is given in the problem. So this is the column and length of this column is 4 meter and the bottom part this is fixed. So this end is fixed and the top part is hinged. So this part is hinged. So if you make a cross section at any place, this column cross section will look something like this. So this is a compound column. Basically this is made up of a ISHB section. So this is the ISHB section, ISHB 250, this means depth is 250, so this means half of the depth that is from neutral axis to this point is 125 millimeter and then we have two cover plate one cover plate here this is on the top and one cover plate at the bottom so this is another cover plate dimension of this cover plate is given that is 300 times 16 so this means width is 300 mm and depth of this cover plate is 16 mm. So now we have to find how much force I can apply to this column. So what is the maximum compressive force that can be applied to this column. So how will you find this? If you remember we can use the tables that is given in IS 800. To use that table you need to have KL by R that is effective slenderness ratio. To calculate the effective slenderness ratio you need to know the radius of gyration and to know the radius of gyration you need to know the moment of inertia. So the first thing will be to calculate the moment of inertia of this compound section. And then we can find the corresponding force that can be applied to this column. So let us proceed. So what are the things that is given? So this is a pin end at one end and fixed end at other end. So the key value that is used to find the effective length we can find from the table 11 of the code. That is, in this case, k is equals to 0.8. Height of the column or length of the column is given. That is 4 meter. So now I can calculate the effective length. Effective length is nothing but kl. k is 0.8, l is 4. So effective length of this column is 3.2 meter. Now the next thing we have to find is what is the buckling class of this section so that I can use the table. So there are four tables A, B, C, D tables in IES 800. So which table I should use that depends upon what is the buckling class. So this is a built up section because we have built this section by putting some cover plates. So if you see table 10 that gives you buckling class of cross section. So here you will find buckling class for built up member is C. So buckling class for this section is 
C. So this is a section of buckling class C. The, the value for K that is 0.8 in this case, you can also find this value from the table 11. So here I have this a snapshot of table 11 from IS 800. So this table 11 gives you the effective length of prismatic compression member. So you see different condition you have different value of effective length. So this is the effective length and here you have the boundary condition and this is the representation. For example, if one end is fixed, something like this and other end is free, you have a effective length of 2L. This means K is equals to 2. One end is fixed, another end is hinged, then you have K is equals to 0.8. That you can find from table 11. So that's what we have used in the previous slide. Now, you have to find what is the properties of ISHB 250 and this you can find from SP6. So I have taken a snapshot from SP6 that is handbook. So you can see ISHB 250 different properties are given. For example, bed per meter, width of the flange, thickness of the flange, thickness of the bed, moment of inertia and radius of gyrations. These distances are given in SP6. One important point in SP6, this is the XX axis. And now in my problem, this is my ZZ axis. So subsequently I will make adjustment for ZZ and XX axis because in this problem, we have considered this axis as ZZ axis. So let us try to proceed. So we have to find moment of inertia. As I said, we have to find the radius of gyration for this built up section. First, I will find moment of inertia about the ZZ axis. Let's find IZ. So how we can find? So first, I know the moment of inertia of ISHB 250. Let's call this as IZZ. And then I have to add the moment of inertia of the cover plate. How we will find the moment of the inner moment of inertia of the cover plate? This is simple. First, we will find what is the moment of inertia about its neutral axis. That is BDQ by 12. And then I have to use the parallel axis theorem. That is area times by 1 square. So this term is here. Since we have two plates, so one cover plate on the top of the flange and another cover plate at the bottom of the flange, that's why we have to multiply by 2. So let us plug the different values. IZZ, so this is IZZ, but in this table which is IXX, so I can find IXX, this is here, 7983.9 cm4. So this value I have converted into millimeter 7983 into 10 to the power 4 millimeter 4. 2 times B is 300 meter millimeter that is given and depth of this is given that is 16 meter. So BDQ by 12. Area of the plate that is 300 times 16. That is area of the plate. And then this distance by so this distance by 1 will be, so this distance is 125 and this is half of the thickness of the plate. Half of thickness is 16 by 2 that is 8. So 125 plus 8 that is 133. So this is that distance. So if you plug this and calculate this, you will find IZ is in this case is 24. 985 10 to the power 4 millimeter 4. Now I know IZ, I can calculate area. So let's calculate the area and then we can find radius of gyration. So radius of gyration is nothing but a square root of moment of inertia divided by area. So area built up section. So we have to find first area of this ISHB 250 section. 
this area is given in sp6 that is 6971 millimeter square and then two cover plate so this is 2 times 300 times 16 if you add this this is the value of area now i can find radius of gyration so plug the value of moment of inertia and this area we can get the radius of gyration of the built up section so this is the radius of gyration along z axis similarly we can find moment of inertia or built up section along the y axis and the radius of gyration along the y axis note that this is my by y axis so what will be the moment of inertia same i by y of ishb section along this axis plus two times moment of inertia of this plate now you can calculate the moment of inertia of this plate about this axis this will be once again same formula but in this case b will be replaced by d so d b q by 12 so this is the central axis about this axis you can calculate the moment of inertia of this cover plate and this will be simply d so this distance is d and this is this distance so d b q by 12 so let us plug all this value so i by by this i can find from sp6 and two times this is the depth of the section width and this divided by 12 so this is the value of moment of inertia about the y axis same thing now i can find radius of gyration as i calculated area in the previous step let's simply plug this area and this is your moment of inertia so this is the radius of gyration about the y axis so now we have to find which radius of gyration is minimum because we have to find effective slenderness ratio that is maximum so radius of gyration along the y axis is 74 and along the z axis is 122 around 123 so we have to consider minimum radius of gyration that is by axis radius of gyration that is 74.5 millimeter so minimum radius of gyration is 74.5 millimeter now we can calculate lambda lambda is the effective slenderness ratio kl by r minimum kl is equals to 3 to 0, 0 millimeter we calculated in the first step and r minimum is 74.5 so this gives me lambda is equals to 42.95 around 43 so this is a non-dimensional number now once i have this effective slenderness ratio i can go to the table because i know the buckling class what was the buckling class buckling class for built-up member was buckling class c so let's go to the table 9c so you see 9c of is 800 2007 this says table 9c compressive stress design compressive stress fcd for column buckling class c so this is for class c now here you see this is the slenderness ratio effective slenderness ratio here it is given and here you have different grades of steel so we have illustrious corresponding to 250 so we are interested in this column and my lumped <coughs> value is 42.95 so around 43 so this is the lambda value somewhere here so what we can do is we can find what is the corresponding value for 40 and what is the corresponding value for 50 for 40 this is 198 and for 50 this is 183 and then i can use the interpolation linear interpolation so let's use these two values so for 40 this value is 198 you see here and 50 this is 183 so 50 this is 183 now i can use linear interpolation so using interpolation i have to find for 42.95 so 198 
and these values are decreasing so 198 minus because 42 is greater than 40 so that's why we have to reduce that's why we have put a negative sign here and the difference is 198 minus 183 and this is the difference in the x-axis that is 132 minus 130 minus 120 difference of 10 and this is the difference 42 minus 40. So if you use this simple linear interpolation you can find FCD and this is 193.6 MPa. This makes sense because this has to be less than 198 and it should be greater than 183 MPa. So once I know the designer stress, FCD value, what can I do next? I can find the force, the axial force, axial compressive force that can be applied to this column. And that is simply force is equals to a stress times area. So let's do that. So critical buckling load in this case will be FCD times effective area. We have calculated this area. And a stress is also known and we can multiply by 10 to the power minus 3 to convert everything in kilo newton. So you can apply a load up to 3208 around 3200 kilo newton load can be applied to this column. So this is the critical buckling load for this column. So in this video we have seen how we can calculate the critical buckling load for a compound column. Idea is very simple. You have to use the tables that is given in IS 800. Since this is buckling class C, you have to use table 9C. To use that table, you need to have effective cylinderness ratio. And to know that, you need to know radius of gyration. And to know the radius of gyration, you need to do moment of inertia of the compound section. So if you follow these steps, you can clearly calculate the design compressive load or design axial load, design axial compressive load for a column of cross section built up kind of section. So we close this video here and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.